Hi again. Last time I did a video and I showed you how to do stone walls or stone dikes. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do castles because it uses exactly the same principles. So if you come here, um, so this is how we do stone dikes. I said if you haven't watched the video, go back and seek it out. It's on YouTube and it's also on my website under art videos. Um, so how to do stone dikes is, if you remember, we did a very light variegated wash. We let that dry. We put a broken wash on the top of that. We let that dry and then we put the shadows on. Three um, completely different processes. And that's exactly the same as um, castles. So here we are, we've got our castle. Um, first of all, can you just, you have to ignore the fact it's got details like winding and ignore the fact it might have a shady side. A suggested colour palette again, it's the one I often use and it just goes great for any type of building. Um, and you'll see here, I've mixed this up very dilute. Here's the ultramarine blue um, and there's the burnt sienna and there's the yellow ochre. You can mix those two up a bit or you can keep them separately. Last time I mixed them up, this time I've kept them a bit separately. Right. Variegated wash, I've done this before, you must have your board at a slope and um, use whatever brush you're comfortable with. I'm just going to put in quite a big brush. Look, loads of paint, loads and loads of paint. Um, get my, that's right, just needed my rag. Then we go into the next colour, in this case it's ultramarine blue. Can you see I'm putting tons and tons of paint on? Um, then into the next colour, which is burnt sienna. And what I'm allowing it to do is just to mix on the paper. Um, I'm just introducing the paint to each other and it's doing its own thing. If you find the brush is too big, then just go down a notch. As you see, it just obviously takes you a bit longer, but um, same principle. So we take that all the way down. If you find it starts to um, get a little bit too bobbly, just pick it up a bit. If it starts to mix too much, remember I told you last week, you can just actually paint with a bit of water and that just gives it some... Um, somewhere to mix otherwise sometimes it over mixes so you carry on right down to the bottom and I'll just do that very quickly you'll be taking a little bit more care than me but um, if I just take it at the bottom what you're then left with is a dribbly bottom like that and don't leave that and then put your board down because it'll all back run what you want to do is get a brush take all the moisture out of it that's now called a thirsty brush and it'll just scoop up all that along the bottom there so that's your variegated wash right so let's put that to one side so let's say that's completely dry now and you've got something like this slightly bigger castle here um, so as you can see I've ignored the windows I've ignored the shadow what we need to do is put texture on so here we are this time I've got if I can find it quite a small brush because I'm wanting to do um, some textural bits on the stone quite thick paint and I don't want a lot on it it's this we've done it before it's this dry dry brushwork we're wanting something like that and that very scarily is going to go onto uh, without a hair it's going to go onto like that just drag it you're going to drag it and you can see it starts to create brushwork. Now you don't want to do that all over um, because it looked too much. So uh, this is water now. And what I'm doing, I'm just melting in. I'm just dissolving in the edges. Because what we want to do with the castle, we just want to have a few areas like that. We don't want it all over. So again, if I maybe choose an area to just drag it. Like that. What I also like to do is just with a small brush, maybe start to just create a little bit of stonework as well and then drag it. And then again, just dissolve that out with a bit of fresh water. So you choose a few areas. Look, this is one I've done. I mean, obviously I use a much brighter palette, but you can see I've painted this area here, I've painted that area there, and I've left quite a lot of it um, just as it's the initial wash I, you want some areas of texture and what happens there is your brain will just kind of fill in the rest finally let's just say that's all lovely and textural um, you've then got the shadows this is the scary bit um, if you remember I've done the wash underneath and you 
you hold it at a slope, it's really important. If you hold it at a slope, it's not going to disturb the underneath. If the underneath's dry, so long as you keep that dribbly bottom going, because what this means is I'm not actually dragging the surface. If this paint I was putting on the top was too um, thick and too dry, what it would do, it it would drag the surface off and you'd get a horrible muggy, um, muddy mess. So let's just take that down to the bottom and let me just show you on the one that I've done. Um, there we are, as you can see, I've done that um, dark shadow on top of that. And also you can do the windows. Now again, just a little trick. This I think does not look very good if you do it completely like that. What I think looks much better is if you take, um, if you draw a shape in it and then dissolve it with a bit of water, you've got the suggestion of a bit of shadow to put a bit back in. So that, I think, is a better window. And let me again show you on the one I've done. That there is a much better looking window. It looks like it's got depth than just that. So that's it. Castles. Many castles in Scotland, so go out and paint them. Bye-bye. Thank you.